Amen. I love that line. I'm about to get my worship on. Nothing better. Nothing better to, uh, <laughs> to wash the bugs off the windshields than some rain from God that says how much he loves us, how much he wants to bless us. Uh, yeah. When it's a bad day, start worshiping. Start singing. Do something. Uh, Ellen, are you ready to take some kids? All right, kids. Uh, Christmas program. Get going. Good stuff coming there. Isn't it good to have that many kids? Look at all those kids go. Love it. We are in Matthew chapter 6 today. Um, I'll let you know, I said our, our board met uh, earlier this morning. We've got some, some big situations coming up that we've got to make uh, some, some decisions. And, and we need to make good decisions. We need to make solid decisions that are, are Christ-led, that are um, uh, in line with what the Bible says that we should do as stewards of God's money. Um, and that, that's the, the, the money that you guys send in here, the money that we receive from other uh, donations. Um, God wants us to use that appropriately and use that well. And we want to use that to advance God's kingdom. We don't want to use that to just build a building. We don't want to use that to just have um, programs that we enjoy or that we, uh, uh, you know, do, that we get a lot out of um, ourselves personally. We want to use that money um, for the advancement of God's kingdom, to reach souls for Jesus Christ, to, to have a, a compassionate uh, ministry about what we do here that reaches those in need. Just as Jesus said, he's going to separate the sheep from the goats and he's going to make that test by how did you, how did you feed the, those who are hungry? Uh, give those who are thirsty a drink? Did you, did you visit the imprisoned and the sick? Uh, did you clothe the naked? Um, that's how God's going to turn. So we want to have a compassionate ministry. We want to have an outreach. We want to have a way to reach the needs of the people in Davis County. That's why God put us here. We're not in Wapolo County. We're not in Missouri somewhere. We are in Davis County, Iowa to reach the people that are in Davis County, Iowa. Amen? And he wants us to reach them and show that there's a need, meet a need, and then also win souls for Jesus Christ. That's what we want to do. Um, and we, want, we need to be good stewards of what uh, has come in and what is going to continue to come in. Um, and we got we to gotta do some things. We got to do a refinancing uh, of our mortgage. That's something that's coming up. And we've got the, the first steps of that going on where it's gonna, we're going to work down that process. We may be switching banks. Um, not a huge thing for anyone to really worry about, but something that we're going to be working towards uh, to free up some, some money. So now all of the money that comes in right now, about 60%. Almost 60% of the money that comes in that we have goes towards the, the maintenance and the mortgage of this building. Um, that's, a really, that's, a, that's a really bad number, just to be, to be very honest with you. That's not a, that's not a good number. Uh, that number should be closer to 25%. So two things need to happen uh, in order to fix that. One, we need to bring more money in, okay? And we're doing that by reaching more and more people, and that's, that's the natural progression of things, and that's, everything's going well there. Um, we also need to make sure we, we are watching our expenses as best we can. Um, and so that's, that's the process that we're in right now. And so that's kind of one of the things that's going on, um, and we're doing those, and everything's going good. Uh, what that does, though, is it leads me into a great message today about where our treasures are at. Um, Jesus had some very strong words uh, for his followers about what uh, they should do with the, the things of this earth. Um, and so we've got we've to have a, a good sense of what that means for us tonight. And I'm very excited already to talk tonight. Last week, I was not real excited about our Sunday night discussion because um, it had to do with things that are very difficult to talk about sometimes. And we have, we have people in, 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 in churches, and it should be this way, we all have our issues, but we have people that have dealt with personally the issues that we talked about last week. And that's a very difficult thing to become more personal about as you get into a smaller group and open up and talk. And, and, and that's, that's, that's a good thing because it can help other people, but it also is a scary thing. And it was something that I was nervous about last week. This week, I'm excited um, about talking about where our treasures are at. Where are the things that are most important to you? What are you doing with them? And what are, should you be doing? What should you not be doing? And we're going to take a look at, at what Jesus says about this in, in Matthew chapter 6. All right, and we're going to start in verse 1. If you're all there, we're going to read uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, and then we'll jump down uh, to verse 19. And then next week, we'll go back to the middle of chapter 6 and talk about prayer and fasting. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Be careful... 
not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your right hand, left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Okay, that's the first part of this, this, this passage that we're going to read. Jump to verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust, moth, moths and vermin uh, destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. This is big here. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. I find it interesting a lot of times, that last verse there, you cannot serve two masters, you cannot serve both God and money. And a lot of pastors, a lot of motivational speakers will come up and say, you can't be divided on things, you can't serve uh, family and your job. You can't serve God and your job. You can't serve God and your family. And, and, and Jesus was very specific. I looked back, uh, you can look, and you can do this too, you can look back at the original language and what the, they, they translated through, and he is very specific that you cannot serve God and money. Okay, it's not, there's no other two things that he's separating out there. Um, the fact of the matter is, we do serve God. We want to serve God. We want to give our lives for God. Um, and it's, that's so, so, there's such an interesting, and I think I've preached on this before, but there's the passage where Jesus says that Jesus came to serve and not to be served. And so that's such an interesting thing that we, we do want to serve God. Uh, but how we do that is by serving the world. How we do that is by taking care of the needs of the people. And that's actually servanthood to Jesus. Um, but anyways, God and money, he's very specific about how that splits off, okay? And so he just got done talking about giving to the needy. Then he starts talking about treasures in heaven, treasures on earth. And he says, you can't serve two masters, okay? Jesus is, is, is laying down a platform that's very, very precise about where our mind should be when it comes to these kinds of things that, that dominate our life on earth. I just got done talking about the finances of the church. And if we went to each family unit that's here today and start talking about uh, financial things, or if you start talking with each other about your financial situations, there's a lot of burdens out there, right? There's, there's, there's job losses, there's job raises, there's uh, different things that you're trying to get. There's different ways that, of bills that come in that you've got to figure out how to pay for. Um, and if you take, if you have to work more hours and you lose family time, it's just, it's, it's an insane thing that weighs on our hearts when it comes to money, okay? And God is saying here through his son, Jesus Christ, you cannot serve both God and money. You've got to make a choice. Doesn't mean that you don't use money. Doesn't mean that you don't have money. It means that you cannot serve it. And there's a very distinct way, and he gets to that point at the end after talking about how we give to the needy and what do we do with our treasures. Do we store them up here on earth? Do we store them here on earth or do we store them up in heaven? And so Jesus is very specific about that and I think that that's very cool. One thing I want to point out in those first four verses of giving to the needy is he never says you need to start giving to the needy. Uh, he says, he doesn't say, hey, you need, to, you need to start noticing these people that are in need and giving money to them and then this is how you do it. He assumes already that these people are giving to the needy, that they're taking care of the people in their community. And that's one of the things that we want to do with this Grace Point Closet through donations of, of clothes, through donations of, of furniture and appliances, those kinds of things. If there's any financial donations that can help us with reaching and advertising, those kinds of things, we want to be able to use that to get out there and reach. And, and you can have a part in that. And Jesus is very much assuming that the people he's talking to already take care of the people in their community, right? If we look through the stories of the New Testament, they have uh, the, 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 the man who begs at the, at the, at the, at the, at the uh, well, uh, or at the, at the uh, now I'm blanking, uh, the pool, uh, and he's, he, he's met there and he asks uh, for, for gold and silver, he asks for money, and they say, silver gold I do not have, but I have it give you, stand in the name of Jesus Christ and walk. Um, there's a whole bunch of people there. If you read that whole story, that is where the people would gather, and then the people of the town would come in and they'd, 
help where they could, or they'd give money, they'd give food, different kinds of things. It wasn't like a, a ministry that went towards that. Um, as we get into the book of Acts, we look at the, the, uh, the ministry where they, they, they had settled the church, they'd started uh, uh, helping people out, they would share everything they had, everything that, that individuals had would come into the church and then it would be dispersed out to those who had need. Uh, and then they get to the point in chapter 7 where they have their first fight in the church. It's kind of an interesting way, you know, chapter 2, the church has started, the Holy Spirit is powerful, they're doing all this great stuff. Chapter 4, uh, they're sharing everything, everything's great still, woohoo. Chapter 7... Mm, now we're fighting. Um, and so, yeah, uh, churches, churches have been fighting since the start of the church. Uh, so, so keep that in mind as we try to not follow that part of the example. Um, the, the, the thing that they're fighting over, though, is the ministry to widows and orphans, right? They're feeding this, and the, 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 the Grecian Jews are being overlooked, uh, but for the sake of the, he, uh, the Hebrew Jews, um, and they're, they're complaining about that. And so they've got to figure out a way to have this ministry go so that the giving to the needy can be done well and done correctly. And Jesus is telling us here that we need to give, but he's already assuming that we do. So the assumption is there. It's not, this world is not just to take care of ourselves, have you ever felt like that's all you can do sometimes? Is just take care of yourself? Um, I know that I've been there, whether it's financially, whether it's um, emotionally. I, I just can't even fathom uh, what other people's needs would be right now. And what I really believe God feels about this is that we do need to take care of each other. We also need to handle our own stuff. I, we had a great talk in quizzing. Do you guys remember uh, Galatians chapter 6? Um, carry each other's burdens, and in, in that you will fulfill the law of Christ. And then just three verses later it says, each one should carry their own burden. So what is that telling us? That means we take care of our stuff, you get our stuff right, get your stuff right, and then you look for ways to help others. Okay? Those that don't have their stuff right. Those that are struggling, maybe they don't know God, so they don't, they don't care if they have their stuff right. But if we're going to follow God, we're going to follow Jesus, we need to focus on getting our lives in an order that God finds pleasing. That's an act of worship. It's a spiritual act of worship, how we live our lives, how we take care of ourselves and our situations. So that when we are looked at from, say, a business standpoint or a personal relationship standpoint, and, and say you're, you're not someone who... who um, is, is current on all their, all their bills or uh, banks don't want to loan to you. That's not a good Christian witness to put out there. Um, if you're someone that goes to a restaurant and doesn't tip well, uh, that's not a good Christian witness to put out there. You need to take care of your stuff so that when people look at you, they see someone who has their stuff together that in each, each one should carry their own burdens. And then we can carry each other's burdens. And in that, that fulfills the law of Christ. And it's such a great thing, um, but we can't, we can't focus more on other people if we are out of whack. Does that make sense? Okay, and I believe this is absolutely, Jesus, Jesus believes this. We have so many people in this world today that try to take care of other people. That try to, they'll give, they'll give I, know, I know people specifically that will give hundreds to thousands of dollars to other people and they're, they're two months behind on their own bills because they want to help somebody else out. Great, you help them out, but, but you personally are not doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're actually not, there's, there's, there's nothing good biblically, Lord, you know, you, and that's the thing. People try in this worldly system to take care of everything else that's going on. They try to help other people in their own strength, their own power. And in reality, if we get our own stuff right, depend on God to lead us towards others to help, we will be able to do that much better, much more effectively, much more efficiently, and that will be better stewards of the money that God has blessed you with, the job that God has blessed you with, the family that God has blessed you with. You can use all of those resources to better reach others once your stuff is taken care of. And that's why I believe those verses in Galatians, what Paul is talking about, each one should carry their own burden and then carry each other's burdens. And in that way, you fulfill the law of Christ, which is what Jesus is talking about here in giving to the needy. You've got to be able to give. And in order to be able to give, you've got to get yourself in a place that is good. And we do that through discipleship in the church. Um, 
I was reading uh, uh, something on Facebook the other day that said something along the lines of, uh, I think it was, some, Carrie Shirky was, it was the one that put it out there. Most of you know Carrie, uh, or some of you do. Um, and she put out there that, you know, uh, this verse in Corinthians that talks about uh, Paul, Paul gives instructions not to shame you, um, but to teach you because of how much he loves you. He wants you to get this right. And she, she had put on a great uh, analogy of how when she was younger, she was in color guard or other things that she would practice and get right. And coaches and judges would tell her what to do differently, would tell her what to change, what to modify in order to get it right so that on the time, the, the day of the judging came, the time that when, they, when her performance had to be critiqued, that she would be ready to stand and perform the way that she needed to do. And she, she had a great analogy for how we need to look for others to do that same thing for us. And Dorothy, your testimony about the other ladies in the church that are helping you in that, that kind of situation is great. And that's what we want to be. We want to be people that help each other out. And we've got to do it in a way to where we can trust that the people that we put ourselves around, that's look around here in this room, the people that we're around, we are going to help each other out. And there are those of us that are in need that we need to help each other and give and take and work together. And that's community that Jesus is wanting to work through. Okay. Now he does give instructions for what to do. Give so that it's in secret. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And that way uh, you will receive your reward in heaven. He does say that those who give and shout what they gave, they've received their reward in full. They get public, uh, public praise, adulation for what they gave. God says, or Jesus says, but do it in secret and you will receive an even greater reward. When God blesses you, when you enter into eternity with him. Don't worry about what's, what, what accolades you're getting here on earth. Uh, you know, every time I see someone in the, in, the, in the newspaper or something and they're shaking the hands with a, a, a school president or something, a university president, because they just gave a, a one and a half million dollar grant or something like that or, or something like that, and they want, it, they, want it, they, want, they want accolades, they want to be praised for that, and, and those CEOs, those, those, those business leaders, they, they're taught to praise the one who, who gave that money. And Jesus has a different thing. He doesn't, he doesn't want us to let people know uh, what we give. He doesn't want people to know uh, because we do it in secret. Because, because when we do it in secret, we're giving God the glory in doing that. We're, ta- we're not taking the glory for ourselves. We're giving God the glory because he has blessed us to bless others. And that's absolutely his message there. As we go over to verse 19, and he talks about treasures in heaven, treasures on earth versus treasures in heaven. The crux of this message today I want to get to, every one of us has treasures. Every one of you, if you take a look at your life, uh, the common thing that people talk about is, is let me open up somebody's checkbook and I'll show you where their treasures are at. I'll show you where their heart is really at. Uh, What do they spend their money on is the basic premise there of where your heart is at when it comes to monetary things, when it comes to uh, materialistic kind of ideas. And Jesus is saying here, we've got to be very careful about where we store our treasures. Okay? If I were to ask, how many of you know within a few hundred dollars where your 401k is at? I bet some of you would know. Don't raise your hands. Uh, Mine's not very high. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, when we, I, 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 we're going to get in there. There's the next patch of the scripture talks about uh, birds who stow away in barns, birds who, 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 who work and work and work, and, and God's going to take care of them. And I heard a message one time that talked about um, 401k plans and retirement plans and how God hates retirement plans. <laughs> God hates retirement savings. And I don't think that's, that's quite the case. We need to have a prepared attitude for the future. Um, I want to be able to, to prepare enough to where if I can retire from work, doesn't mean I retire from being a servant of God doesn't mean I retire from being uh, a minister uh, uh, to anybody out there. And that's everybody in here can say that same thing. No matter when you retire from work, doesn't mean you retire from Jesus Christ. You continue to work on. You continue to press on. And where your treasures are at now, if you are putting things on a pedestal in your mind or in your heart and say, I can't give that up. That's a treasure. That's a treasure. What is it in your life that you can't get rid of if God were to ask you to do that? What is it in your life that you put, is it family? Is it your job? Is it your guns? Is it your boat? Is it your land? 
What is it that you're putting up here that you can't get rid of if God asked you to? And and again, what Jesus is getting at here, it's a heart issue. It's an issue of what's going on inside your heart. Is there something that you are not able to give over to God? Is there something that you have not surrendered to him fully? And money tends to be that thing for most people because it's scary to give it up. It's scary to not have that control over what you've earned, right? Do you believe that God has blessed you with the job that you have? Do you believe that God has blessed you with uh, the family that you have? I'll tell you right now, and I'll I'll share this, uh, Rachel and I uh, have have great families, parents who, who love us desperately, grandparents who have loved us. And those blessings have been phenomenal. I, I, we could count, we'd have to take our shoes off to count how many times they've blessed us. Uh, you know, one, two, three, four, down. Okay. That was a joke. You guys are a little stoic in here today. Maybe that's my fault. Trying to, we got to shake it out, get loosened up here. Okay. They've, they've blessed us numerous times uh, in more ways than just the, 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 the lessons that they've given us in life the lessons to follow Jesus Christ, to be uh, the people that we are. They have blessed us financially. They have blessed us uh, with gifts. uh, And I praise God for that, okay? And I know that that's not the case for every family, okay? And And I understand that. And I don't know why God works that way sometimes. But here's the whole point of that. If you get your stuff right, and to tie this back in to be the beginning, and you live your life following God, in such a way that you get where you, everything that you have, you're, you're okay with God doing anything he wants with anything that you have because it's his anyways, right? If, you're, if you get to that point and you continue to live your life that way and you see people, your kids, grandkids, other people in need, you will have that to give away. Your treasure will be the soul's of the people that you love. Your treasure will be your own soul and what you invest into the lives of the people that you want to see reach eternity with God in heaven. Okay? When we, we have, we had 20 kids here, 21 kids here on Wednesday night. I want to see all 21 of those souls reach heaven. Our church, this building, you people, all of us working together is the way that we, God, God has chosen to use us in order to reach children, to reach families, to reach all the people that we want to see come to know Jesus Christ, that's the treasure that we want to store up in heaven. And so many times we get caught up in saying, it's their choice. They've made a choice, I can't do anything about it. And sometimes that's true. Sometimes we do have to let people go and say, they've they've chosen what they want to choose. Do you still pray for them? Do you still reach out to them? in ways to help, to feed, clothe, uh, visit them, to, to, to take care of their needs if you can. And here's what I'm here to tell you. God wants to bless each one of us. And this is not a prosperity gospel kind of preaching. God wants us to be blessed in order to help others. He doesn't want us to build wealth to hold on to it for ourselves. He wants us to accumulate things that will help others. That's why it's not a treasure. Okay? We can have things, we can have money, and it's not a treasure because we're using it to reach more people for God. But when those things start to get into a way where he says, I can't give that up in order to help somebody else. I could tell you countless stories of people that I've read books on and followed where, where, where they've been huge millionaires, great, great, everything. And God got a hold of them and they started to see needs in the lives of the people around them. They started selling things to be able to give money to people. They started um, uh, 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 stopping their, the way that they run their businesses in a certain way in order to be able to bless other people. Because they got out of this mindset that the things that we have are the treasures themselves. The things that we have, the money that we have, the, the houses, the cars, the whatever, those things that we have, those are just tools to reach more people for Jesus Christ. Those are resources to reach people for Jesus Christ because the treasures that we want to store up in heaven are the souls of the people that we love and care for. We want our kids to go. We want our neighbors to go. We want our loved ones and our friends to go. 
And in order to do that, God asks us to put them on the pedestal, their souls on the pedestal. And what is it that you're willing to do to ensure that that happens? If there's anything that's in the way of that, Jesus says there's no way to serve two masters, God and money. Are you serving God? Are you willing to give him everything? Or is there something that you're holding on to that you can't give up? And maybe, just maybe, that's the thing God wants to use to reach other people. And here's what I'm going to tell you. When you let God direct the things that you're holding on to, the things that you think that you can't live without maybe, or the things that you don't want to live without, you let God have those things, he's going to bless you a hundred times over. That's a promise in the Bible that he will bless you. Maybe not financially a hundred times over what you've given up, but in your life, in your spiritual life, in your family life, in your, in your job life, uh, he will bless you so many times over what you think you need to hold on to right now. When we hold things in a closed fist, one of my favorite lessons I've ever learned, hold things in a closed fist. It's yours. You can have it. You're holding on to it. No one's getting it from you. Holding tight. But it's not going to be used for any purpose other than what you divvy it out for, what you choose to give it for, whether it's for yourself or you say, oh, because of me, I can bless you. But when you hold on to your things with an open hand, and say, okay, God, you do with this. Whatever you want to do, it's yours anyways. You gave it to me. I freely give it back to you. It's a whole new way of life. It's a whole new way of looking at things, and it frees us up inside to feel for people the way that God wants us to. To say, I can use my stuff. God, use my things, use my resources to help those who are in need. So we give to the needy by making sure the souls of the people that we love, that we care for, we put them on the pedestal, that we want to see them reach eternal life with Jesus Christ. And the things that people tend to use as treasure, the money, the toys, the whatever, those are just tools. Those are just resources to get us to the point where we can take care of people and show them the love of Christ. Amen? Amen. I feel like I like put you all in a good slumber. If you guys need to lay down and take a nap, that's fine. Uh, but this, to me, this is an important message. Uh, this is such an important thing, and, and God's weighing heavy on me um, today that there are, there are things in, in my own life that I need to make sure I give up in order to let God use. And I think that that's going to be true for every person in here. There are things that we hold on to that we do not allow God. It's not that we're saying no to God, but have you, have you ever looked at the things in your life, whether it's things or, or, or whatever, the, the things that you have in your life that you've gotten your, because, of your, because of your income, because of your job, whatever, and you've asked, you've asked God, okay, God, how can I use this to reach people? How can I use this, this, this vehicle to reach people? How can I use uh, 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 these, these TVs to use people, to reach people? How can I use all these clothes to reach people? How can I use this house that you've given me to reach people? And I don't know what that answer is, but I'm here to tell you that God has a plan for everything that you have in your home, everything that you have in your life. God has a plan for that, to use that to reach people for Jesus Christ. And I think that we would find a brand new movement of God. I, mean, I, I think it would be huge if people were to say, not I'm waiting for God to tell me what to do with this stuff, but to say, God, I give this to you. Use it how you want. And I promise you, God will do something with that if you are open to actually letting him use it. So I'm here to tell you today, offer your lives to him. Offer the things in your life up to him and let the people that he wants to reach be the things that you store up in heaven, the hope that we have in eternal life and not the treasures here on earth. Those are just tools, instruments. Staying with me. I'm going to pray and then if you feel the need to take a nap, you can. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord God, I, I think I did a terrible job today. 
of what you wanted to have heard. Thank you for a great time of worship this morning. Thank you for a great time of testimony today. And Lord God, I pray that, that even through my fumblings and even through my uh, lack of energy maybe, uh, I pray that you have spoken to people today. I pray that you have, have reached down in and touched someone's heart or mind in such a way that opens up a new way of thinking about what we do with the things that you have blessed us with. Everything that we have is a gift and a blessing from you, Lord God. And I pray that we would be a church that begins to use those things as the tools they are to reach people for you, to show people the love of Jesus Christ. Help us, Father, today to be able to do that. I thank you for everything that has happened here today, and I pray blessings upon everyone as they leave here, uh, Heavenly Father. And as we gather again tonight, uh, let us come expecting to meet with you again and to be able to just discuss how your words apply to our lives today. I love you, Father, and in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everybody.